I always wanted to do that. Drones. So, what is a drone? In regards to wedding videography, it's simply a camera that flies, nothing more. With a drone at a wedding, you can capture some absolutely amazing landscape or aerial shots of uh, your wedding, um, and you can also capture some absolutely dreadful shots. In all cases, the final film will contain minimal aerial footage, so whether the footage is good or bad, it's neither gonna improve or detract from the final product. A drone can quite simply get to places that one of these can't. For example, a, a wedding that we shot earlier this year, uh, the couple took a trip out on a rowing boat. Now, usually we'd be stuck on the side just getting static footage from a distance, but once we brought the drone out, we were able to sort of interact with them, fly over them, sort of above and around them, and also get a few quirky shots during the portrait sessions. Another example here, the photographer took them out to a bridge near the venue and usually we'd be stuck on the side just getting some static shots, but we were able to whip the drone out and sort of fly over them, uh, down the river, sort of above them again, just to add a bit of variation into wedding film. You can also get some great uh, opening or establishing shots uh, from a, a vantage point that no one else will see. And you can see we mixed in with the regular camera footage here uh, to show the bride's arrival. You can also add a lot of movement into the wedding film because the majority of the shots will be handheld as static at low level. And apart from when we use the gimbal, and these are the only times you'll actually add motion into wedding film. So again, adding more variation. Flying a drone isn't always as simple as arriving at a location and taking off. Most of the time there'll be some sort of restrictions. We will stop or at least delay your flight. Um, and these can be mostly uh, locations. Uh, so if you're near uh, an airport or a prison, they operate under a, a no-fly zone unless you contact the local air traffic control, which can be a bit of a pain. You also have to ask the landowner's permission. So if you're at a venue, then possibly that would be the hotel staff. There's only one occasion where we were stopped from doing that, but the explain why, and it was for good reason. And now and again, you might even get uh, a member of the public sort of objecting. Recently, um, a friend of ours who's also a, a drone operator and um, tells a story how he was flying legally over a venue but a nearby farmer um, sort of uh, had an argument with him and told him to ring it down and when he refused uh, he, when he threatened to pull out his gun to shoot it out of the sky. Weather can play a bit of a factor because if it's raining or snowing then that's usually a no-no uh, but also wind speeds because every drone's got a sort of a maximum wind flight allowance and um, once I remember um, the Earlier this year I took off and the low level wind was okay but as soon as it got above the buildings the wind took it and it took me about 20 minutes to get back down which is quite scary because I did honestly think I was going to lose it but also the fact that it took me away from actually shooting the day. It can also take quite a while to set up the shots so uh, finding your takeoff location, checking everything's okay, taking off, getting the footage, bringing it back down, packing away. Um, can you can take averagely about 20 minutes and if you're operating in a conventional camera in that point you get lots of footage for instance this dress reveal shot that we did earlier this year um, I spent far too long on this it took me about 30 minutes to get that one shot where if I was just taking it with a, a normal camera I'd probably have it done in about 30 seconds and again this one probably took me about 15 minutes not quite as long as the last one but it's still a lot of time to spend on one shot and also aerial shots aren't always the best option um, say if we were getting a, an arrival shot of uh, the bride and groom at a venue, a lot of the times, once I've got it, I would like to think to myself, I probably could have got better low level. 
and especially for the operator, um, they're quite expensive. Not so much the actual equipment, the practical and theory test, uh, the exam, the, your yearly sort of um, license which you need to get, the registration, your insurance. When I did come to update the license in July, I did toy with the idea of not doing it and possibly outsourcing if anyone did want uh, any drone footage for the wedding. But in the end, I decided to do it. As well as getting great landscape footage of a venue, you can also get, as I mentioned, some terrible stuff. Um, not every venue is suited to having drone videography. Anything that's got horrible surrounding areas or possibly a big car park, you know, who wants to see air conditioning units on the rooftop venue? Uh, people flying illegally because you do need a license to fly commercially. I do know a lot of videographers that don't have the licenses, that's up to them. But it does mean they don't have any insurance. And if anything did happen, then obviously they're going to be in a lot of trouble. And finally, it takes little to zero talent to actually operate a drone. Pushing forward with your thumb is not hard. And this has meant that drone footage has become a sort of way of papering over the cracks for bad videographers. Because the art times I've seen a wedding film star with some amazing drone footage and then crashes down to earth with some terrible, badly exposed, shaky, low level footage with terrible audio is unbelievable. They have to match. So drones, nice to have on a wedding film, not essential for a good one. I down, beautiful, beautiful. Keep it going, that's it, that's it, that's it. I down. Go on, give me two seconds, I down. <laughs> oh, love that. You have to tell me I had something wrong. No, chin up, chin up. <laughs> oh, one more. That's it. No more. <laughs> You're always late. I can't take you anymore. You have no more. Job Christmas party? Hell no, you ain't shit offended you would ask me to. Don't get it twisted that I'm working here because I'm just passing through. But they don't believe me because I've been here for years. The clocks have recently gone back, so we have shorter days, which for us means weddings with sparklers and fireworks and twinkly lights on the run up to Christmas. But for now, see you next month.